Good evening, brothers and sisters. Brother Will here. Before I go any further, Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus, amen. Brothers and sisters, I was not planning on doing a video today at all, especially after our worship ses session last night. Um, but, but wow, when the Holy Spirit um, points out some new revelation, especially this compelling, um, I just had to come in here and do this. So, um, you know, I'm looking at uh, Second Passover, and by the way, you know, I'm, I'm looking at May 23rd for Second Passover. And for those of you with questions in the comments about that, the reason I'm, it's the 23rd for me is because um, the sighting of the new moon. The new moon was sighted, uh, I believe, um, May 9th, if I remember correctly. And counting from that, uh, it actually begins the evening of May 22nd and goes into the evening of May 23rd. And then, um, of course, the moon is at its fullest Eastern time in basically the middle of the morning, 9.53 a.m., if I remember correctly. So, um, but anyway, we've already talked about all that. If you follow my community post, you saw that uh, the Holy Spirit led me to Revelation chapter 12, uh, verse 5, where it talks about the man-child being caught up. And not only is it verse 5, but um, it's the 23rd word in there, which is harpazo, so 523. That was also cool, compelling you know, pretty amazing, but this is mind-blowing. And not only does this um, new revelation speak to Second Passover, but it also uh, confirms some things we talked about in the past, about um, 84 years potentially for the fig tree generation. It also um, makes just yet another compelling case for 2024 being the year of the rapture. So again, no one setting dates. I am simply looking at May 23rd as second Passover um, for the potential high watch date for the rapture. This wind is doing crazy things today. Um, but anyway, so what happened? This is how we came about it. Um, so uh, Brother Kevin just sent me and Tony and Mike, this was yesterday actually, sent us a screenshot of May 23rd and he said, this is the last moment on May 23rd where Uranus is in Aries, okay? And I thought that was significant even then. I thought it was amazing then. Um, and I wrote back, I was like, wow, that's, that's pretty awesome. But I was driving and um, just kind of left it at that. I, I just chalked that up to another cool reason to watch on the 23rd, right? Another amazing piece of information. But it gets way better because today we actually had time to talk. And so um, we were just talking back and forth, and I said, you know, how long does it take Uranus to go through the different constellations? Um, I feel like that there's something there, and the, and the Holy Spirit's just leading this whole conversation. And um, hey, if you follow my channel, you know I'm not, my expertise is not sun, moon, and stars, even though I look, and I certainly look in Stellarium and everything else. But anything that I've found on my channel, including the you know, the, the dragon sign and the stars and everything else, that was all Holy Spirit, because that's not my specialty. He just kind of leads me to these things. Um, so anyway, felt the uh, urge to look up that, that question. Come to find out, it takes 84 years for Uranus to go through the different constellations. Okay, so um, if you've been watching my channel, you will remember, I, I can't even remember, it's been several months now, maybe three, four months ago, uh, I did a video where I was talking about um, that for me, the fig tree generation is alive and well because Anna, um, you know, we had Simeon and Anna. We have Simeon who was promised he would see the Messiah before he passed away, right? We have this generation will not pass until all these things are accomplished. And then immediately after Simeon, we have Anna who was 84 years old. So to me, that has always been a... Um, strong evidence for the fake tree generation totally being fine at 84 years. Now with this Uranus situation, um, it's even more compelling. And I haven't even scratched the surface yet. So here's the thing. Kevin said, hey, May 23rd, the last day Uranus is in Aries. So, and that's Psycho Passover. The reason Aries is big Dr. Barry talked about this, I, I want to say like three years ago, um, is because Aries in, in, the, in the stars, you'll see 
his foot is on the restrainer, the rapture fish, okay? His foot is like holding it in place. So Aries has always been associated with strong rapture, um, just a strong rapture constellation, okay? The fact that I didn't even realize this, neither did Kevin. When we started researching this, found that Uranus actually is in each constellation basically seven years. Seven years. Um, let that sink in for a second. So it's about to leave Aries. Ask me what constellation it's going into. Taurus, the bull, judgment, okay? So um, that's where it's gonna be in for the next seven years, okay? That's just the beginning though, still. So then I felt compelled to, well, where was it? 1948, of course. So um, went back and looked and it's in Taurus, you know, a little bit and then goes into Gemini that year. But when on May 14th, 1948, it was in Taurus. So we have the entire, um, Uranus goes through the entire um, Maseroth, okay, in the course of 84 years. It actually started this 84 year trek perfectly. Um, it starts perfectly with 1948. You know, we, we're talking about the fig tree generation, right? Fig tree generation as being highly um, significant for a time period to look at. But then that, because of that, it also influences not only 2024, but also second Passover. I haven't even gotten to the coolest part yet. So we have this 84 year time period where it's going through all the Maseroth, right? It started in Taurus. Exactly 84 years later, it will complete. So it started in just for a couple months in Taurus, and then it goes into Gemini, okay? And I think that's significant because, you know, Gemini is, some could say it's the, um, the church and the Jews kind of together. Um, that, that's one explanation. It's also Jesus, um, you know, being, uh, bringing reconciliation and so forth. So it's back in Gemini in 2032. All right. So that would be the beginning of the millennial kingdom. So that entire span of time, those 84 years from the time Israel was a nation until 2032, it goes through all of the Maseroth. But these last seven years, it's in Taurus. Judgment. Okay, so that that already was super significant for me. Um, but the fact that it enters Taurus on second Passover. All right. So then, <laughs> just like the Holy Spirit, he was like, why don't you go look when it entered Aries, because it's leaving Aries and going into Taurus on second Passover this May 23rd, what year are we in? 2024. Um, so then I went and looked. Now remember, Passover, second Passover, all the Jewish feast dates shift every year, right? There's never the same date. So um, Uranus entered into Aries, entered into Aries, on April 28th, 2018. Now, those of us who've been watching, or those of you who've been watching even before me, the Watchmen movement was kind of birthed in 2017, the fall there, right? But I mean, not obviously a lot of us have been watching in Y2K and 1988 and all those, but I'm saying this latest kind of really in overdrive Watchmen movement of the Holy Spirit has been since 2017. So most of that time, starting in 2018, Uranus was in Aries, okay, for the past seven years. I said April 28th was when it entered into Aries. Ask me, Will, what day was April 28th, 2018? If you said second Passover, you're correct. So that was just icing on the cake. I mean, um, so this was, and, and by the way, I'm about to pause the video in a second like I have been doing and really just show all this, lay all this out for you visual learners so you can see, I'll, I'll do the Stellarium screenshots, we'll go through some of these scriptures and everything else so you can really see how compelling this is. We'll talk about Anna and the 84 years. So just to recap this entire new revelation, Uranus takes 84 years, 
to go through the constellations of the Masroth, okay? With Israel's birth as a nation going all the way to what we're assuming is the end of the Trib in 2031, it goes through all of them, okay? All of them in that time period. For these last seven years, it's been in Aries, which is, there's a lot of compelling evidence that that is the Rapture constellation, okay? It's about to leave Aries on May 23rd. It's about to go into Taurus for seven years, roughly, thereabout, seven years in Taurus in judgment for what we're assuming is going to be the tribulation. It entered into Aries, the Rapture constellation, in 2018, one second Passover, April 28th, again, random day, second Passover. It is leaving Aries on second Passover, May 23rd, 2024. Again, random day, not even the same month, yet both second Passover days. Um, I hope you're getting some Holy Spirit uh, <laughs> just hair standing up on your arms, guys, because to me, again, I'm not saying anything's happening on the 23rd. I'm saying I am, it is definitely, definitely the highest watch date I can remember. Based on, if you go want, want to watch my video from two videos ago, where we talk about, you know, second Passover was for someone on a long journey, that being Jesus, right? Going to the Father's house for someone who touches a dead body. We know the dead in Christ are rising first. Um, there, we have all this really juicy evidence for second Passover. Um, so yeah. So I'm going to pause this in just a second and get into that one more thing that I, oh, and I do want to say too, you know, I'm certainly still watching the 18th, the 19th, um, every day between now and then. Um, I know we have the 40 days coming to a close at the end of, you know, from April 8th with the huge sign in the heavens with the eclipse, a third of three eclipses, um, the Aleph Tav eclipse. And so someone asked me on a comment, you know, what, so what do you think on the 18th or 19th? I think something major could happen. Don't get me wrong. I know a lot of us have had um, dreams or visions about um, potential power going out or, you know, the fallen angels coming back to earth and all those, the, all those sorts of things. I mean, any of those things could happen on that day, any of those things or all of the above simultaneously. So, um, and then we have a few days of, you know, chaos before, because I've also, a lot of us, not just me, I've also thought that, um, the power would be out when the rapture happens because otherwise it would be kind of broadcast from everyone's phones, everything else. And so I feel like it would add to the great deception that's coming. Um, if, uh, if, if basically the power's out when the rapture happens so that it, it's not broadcast globally. So could that happen on the 18th or 19th or 20th or 21st or 22nd? Absolutely. Um, and that leads me to the last thing that I wanted to say, which is, um, and I haven't had a chance to flesh this out, research it. I just heard Watch 165 mention it, and then I looked on Twitter myself. So apparently Russia is doing missile tests off of the coast of California, uh, where I am. And um, they're doing that for the next 10 days until May 26th, which of course is after May 23rd. So I was reminded, those of you who have been watching my channel, you know about the whole Russian bells thing that uh, with Crotalus and the two rattlesnakes and everything else. There was an amazing prophetic kind of just thing that the Holy Spirit did. Um, well, around that same time, and I'm going to show you the screenshot from that video, um, about the same time in the fall of 2020, I was awoken with a vision, okay? This is like an open vision, not a dream, a vision of just a, a nuclear missile flying in the air and... Um, I'll have to check the, tra the transcript to know exactly what it was, but it was basically the gist of it was you and your loved ones will be gone before this happens or won't be here when this happens. I'll, I'll we'll look in the transcript in a second. And so anyway, I've always kept that as like, you know, don't have to worry about nuclear war. Don't have to worry about nuclear Armageddon. We're going to be gone before that actually happens. But with this news that, you know, Russia's <laughs> testing missiles off the coast of California now for the next 10 days along with all this other stuff, I was like, wow. I mean, who knows when my last video is going to be? I, I don't know. I haven't been given the, you know, the word from the Holy Spirit not to make another one, but one of these videos is going to be the last one. So I want to make sure we bring that prophetic vision that I got back on here so that, you know, if it's getting close to the time that that is fulfilled, um, it'll be fresh in the, in the video feed. So we're going to get to that also. So anyway, um, 
super exciting times, brothers and sisters. Um, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for leading Kevin and myself and, and others to these, um, and Dr. Barry for uh, helping us with um, with uh, just educating us with the sun, moon, and stars and all those other watchmen who do the same. So we thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for um, just leading us to this moment. Knowledge is increasing, brothers and sisters. Amen, amen. So I'm gonna pause the video. I'm gonna get some of these screenshots for you and kind of just wrap all this up so you can see it. All right. So quick recap of everything I just talked about. Here's the post that I did where, uh, this is from Revelation chapter 12, verse five, if you count 23 words. And we, we know that words are important, especially after that video that released that um, the King James Version Bible is exactly seventh to the seventh power. So that was one of the things that kind of led me on this. Literally every word count is significant. So 523 and you have the exact word harpazo, okay? Um, but anyway, so how long does it take you're going to go through all the constellations? 84 Earth years. And it's approximately seven years per each one of the Masroth, okay? So then this is the story of Simeon and Anna. I don't want to read this whole thing just for time's sake, but um, the ones that I want to point out to you, uh, verse 29 there, talking about Simeon, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. Um, and even before then, uh, it was revealed unto him on verse 26 by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So to me, that has the same kind of, that smacks of the same kind of uh, concept as this generation will not pass away. This man, Simeon, will not pass away until he should see um, the Lord's Christ, right? And then immediately thereafter, we have Anna. <clears throat> and I'm, I'm, I know this is a repeat for a lot of you guys because I did these verses, I don't know, a month or two ago. But anyway, we have Anna. And just just skipping on down, um, uh, da -da -da. she was a widow of about, so 237. Would have about four score and four years, she was 84 years, which deported, departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. And she coming in that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake of him to all them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. And when they had performed all things according to the law, oh, we'll leave it there, looked for redemption in Jerusalem, okay? So we have in the same chapter, someone who's promised, you know, not to see death until they see the Christ, and here we have someone who's 84. They're both, you know, prophesying, essentially. So I think this is a great type and shadow of the fig tree generation with Israel, okay? That it's absolutely within the bounds of the fig tree generation for Israel to be 84, you know, by the time the Messiah arrives. So with that in mind, here we go. Um, I'm not always going to use this pen, but in this moment I will. Um, let me get this off of here. Okay, so... Here we have Taurus down here, okay? So that is, um, let me change the color so you can see it better. All right, here we are. So this is 1948, May 14th. It is in Taurus, okay? This is Uranus, okay? It's in Taurus right here, boom. All right, so let's go on a little further. I'm gonna turn this off for a second so I can, okay, so now this, turn the pen back on. All right, so this, here we are. May 23rd, 2024, okay? It's an Aries. Let's skip to the very next day. May 24th. It is in Taurus. So it comes full circle, okay? So, and it's in Taurus for the next seven years, okay? Plus seven, so 20... It, it actually actually goes a little bit into 2032, okay, because it, it goes into Gemini then in 2032. But the point that I wanted you to see here <clears throat> is that it's fully, it does the full 84-year cycle because it started, you know, in 1948, as we just looked at, 1948. It is in Taurus, okay? And then it's in Aries currently right now until May, in the last day it's in Aries, it's May 23rd. And then May 24th, it goes into Taurus again. Okay, so it makes that full cycle. And then this is the really amazing part. Because again, 523, 
the last day it's in Aries, is second Passover. Here's the really cool part. Second Passover, because I wanted to see in 2018, okay? I asked Google, when was second Passover 2018? Second Passover began on April 28th and ended April 29th in 2018. We're all watching. This is just something that we weren't really focusing on second Passover, and we certainly weren't focusing on the 84-year cycle of Uranus and the fact that the last seven years would be in Taurus, signifying judgment, signifying the tribulation, right? Here we go. April 27th, 2018, it is in Pisces. Remember, 428 is when Second Passover began. 428, it is now in Aries. It went into Aries on Second Passover, and it is ending in Aries on Second Passover. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Again, Am I saying that this is the rapture date? I'm not, but what I am saying is this is major evidence for not only a potential rapture date, but also for 2024 being the year of the rapture, for also the next seven years being the tribulation, and for the 84-year cycle of Uranus to be the same as the fig tree generation. It actually started, you know, it goes through all the constellations, and it, it began in Taurus and ends in Taurus in that same uh, time period from 1948, I'm saying. So um, with that in mind, I'm going to show you the video of Dr. Barry. Actually, I'll do that at the end so I can just get through these screenshots. Okay, I'm going to do the, at the end, I'll do the Dr. Barry video that's like, it's just a short little clip just showing you why it being in Aries is significant for Passover. Um, so if you will, just pause on that thought just for a second. Now I want to show you this real quick. So again, I haven't vetted this, all right, but I just wanted to get this out as soon as possible. So um, mainly just so that I can circle back to this, uh, vision that I got in 2020. So these, this is Dutch sense. And he's talking about, uh, Russia firing missiles off the West coast of the USA between the USA and Hawaii. And other people found that it's basically off the coast of California and it's expected to last for 10 days ending on May 26th that you, that you see there. And of course, I'm looking hard at May 23rd. So that, that falls smack dab in the middle of this. Okay. So now I'm going to, um, I'll start with the video that uh, I was mentioning where I uh, had this vision about the nuclear missile. And I'm not saying that's what they're testing over here, but I just, I wanted to connect this as an encouragement of just how close we are, guys, okay? Um, so I will end this current video and just, uh, I'll end with these two clips and um, yeah. As we always say on this channel, in everything we say and do, may the Lord Jesus be magnified. Love you guys. Enjoy these next two clips. This, this video that I did, you'll see the top, the title up there, End Times Rapture Encouraging Warrant from the Lord and Dream of, I think it's a nuclear missile, but it says. Um, I don't have a transcript of this video for some reason, so it's just easier just to play. And actually, it's cool because I'll show you the, the actual image of the missile. So I'm just going to play this small clip from this video so you can... See that uh, I, this is from 2020. Is um, another one of these kind of really short vignette dreams that I had. Um, and it was this morning, and basically um, all I got this image of was, uh, this image of was a flying missile, and it was a very specific shape, very specific look to it, and um, then the voice said. Um, you and your loved ones will not be here when this happens. So to me, that was a direct reference to the rapture. And so the missile, though, that was in, that was, um, that I had the image of, oh, by the way, so when I, this was, I woke up and I, I woke up immediately when I had that and I fell back asleep and I had the exact same image again and the exact same, uh, word that the voice spoke again, the Lord, obviously, the Holy Spirit, then I fell back asleep again, and a third time had the exact same image and the exact same word from the Lord, so it was three times, um, and so, I mean, it was pretty straightforward what it was, but um, I did immediately after the third time I woke up and Googled, um, I just put in nuclear weapons because in my spirit I kind of knew that was exactly what it was, and um, 
if you Google that, I mean, I've never, I've never Googled that before in my life, but like, if you Google it, there's like, you know, hundreds of images that come up. So I, and they're from like all different ages, you know, the fifties on up to today. And the one that I found that was exactly, exactly the image. In fact, it was flying in the exact same uh, way as the one in my dream or vision. Um, when I when I when I saw this image, it's called the Berevestnik. Uh, it's Russian, but it's it's a new Russian nuclear missile, Berevestnik, and so this is the image of it. This was literally what was in my vision, what was in my dream, right there. So I had that, I had that vision, and I mean, like, I just, I just Googled this and it came up. I mean, like, the Lord gave me a very specific image to find. But I found it pretty quickly and right away. And so, um, anyway, I just think, I just think that's another, another warning of things to come. Off. Uh, fasten your seat belts and uh, put your tray table in the upright position. See you in seven years. <laughs> okay, Good so Dr. we see the lamb with his foot on the tie. We see rapture fish and left behind fish. We see the beast being restrained by the restrainer. We see my chains are gone. We see the bride. So I'm going to pause it right there, guys. So the main thing that I want you to see there is Aries with his foot on the the restrainer the, the the rapture fish okay the 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 fish that ascends whereas the other fish the left behind the tribulation saints stay so anyway i just wanted to point this out to you and we will continue another, another warning of things to come but another confirmation of the believers aren't going to be here when it happens because all of my loved ones the voice said will not be here when this happens so Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your faithfulness. And um, for any of you guys that don't know Jesus yet, simply believe he is who he said he is. Believe that you're a sinner. Recognize that you're a sinner. Believe that Jesus finished the, the once and for all atoning sacrifice on the cross when he died and rose again. Just believe that. Believe that he is Lord, that he is King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and call upon him with your lips, with your voice. Believe in your heart, call upon him. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you, save me. Take me to be with you. I want to be one with you. Um, however, the Holy Spirit leads your heart in your own words. 